Hello, coming to you from an undisclosed location. Um, I got this book after seeing the author on one of the podcasts that I watch, and it is excellent. For years, I have been told that I'm too negative, that I'm too pessimistic, and it's good to see somebody who gets it and that there are a whole group of people who get it because this book is very popular, Afro-Pessimism, which basically, I was always a realist. I was never a pessimist and I was never negative. But when you're in a community that is um, trapped in a bubble of unreality, then your reality comes off as negative, especially when their unreality is fantastic, hopey, dreamy. So um, finally, that hopey, dreamy shit bust. <laughs> Thank goodness. Like the blister or the boil that it was on people's brain. Some people um, have lost their minds over it and some people have just deceased over it, but I'm glad the whole be dreamy shit is gone. A psychotic episode is no picnic, especially if you know you can't call it madness because madness assumes a change in the weather, a season of sanity. I was moaning, sobbing, the crisp disposable sheet that lined the gurney rasped as I shifted. I sat up when they came into the room. No one was going to strap me down, but I didn't climb down for fear of getting, giving them cause. In the glare of fluorescence, they, the doctor and the nurse, were white as dust. The gurney rattled as I shook and cried. They didn't approach. They didn't call for help, not for themselves, nor for me. A monstrous aphasia, too black to care. That's how I saw them see me. And my urge to save them from me eclipsed my desire to be cured. But I couldn't speak, not even to tell them that I wanted to protect them from me. Cluster bombs spiked in my heart. I clutched my chest and cried out. Did they take a step back? Is it your heart? The doctor asked. I wanted to laugh. The funny thing about a mouth is that it needs to close as well as open if a word is to be made. Mine wouldn't close. If it closed, I knew it wouldn't open. The hinges of my jaws made moans or howls, but not words. I thought, how funny is that? I answered him in the words of a bird as its throat is slit. You keep clutching your chest, he said. Are you having a sharp pain somewhere in the region of the heart? I nodded my head. Tell me more, he said but I felt my lips twisting grotesquely. I didn't want to start sobbing again. He told me to take my time. The nurse nodded gravely as though she were peering at a pug-nosed puppy in a cage. I had an urge to answer her gaze with a pug-nosed puppy bark. As this urge grew, her sadness deepened. My bark and her sad saucer eyes were headed for a collision. Rough, rough, give me a biscuit. My head was splitting. And so were my sides, but not in the same register of emotion. Sir, belly laugh, rose up from my torso and met Mr. Why the fuck am I alive? Who had fallen through my raging skull and landed in my throat? The sadness drained from the nurse's eyes. She was her frightened self again. The puppy love had morphed into her need for self-preservation from this hulking black mass with matted, uncombed hair and orbs of fireworks bursting from holes where the eye should be. The doctor sat on a stool with one foot on the lower rung, one foot on the floor, but the nurse remained standing. He massaged a luxuriant eyebrow with his index finger and waited. Laughter is good, he said. Why don't you tell us what's so funny? I wanted to say, would it be all right if I barked? I realized, however, that I would seem crazier if I asked his permission to bark than if I showed some initiative and simply barked without making a big deal of it. I fell through the chasm of laughter and tears. No one had taken me to the student health center. 
I got there on my own as I sat on the gurney, sobbing, fearing the fear of the world in the doctor's and nurse's eyes. I could only answer one of their questions. Is someone with you? By shaking my head, how did you get here? Who brought you? Tear, tears scarred my face in reply. Did you drive? One of them said. I shook my head and they noticed car keys in my hand. Um, they noticed, okay, they still hadn't taken my pulse or my blood pressure. The doctor told me to rest. He said they would return momentarily. When they left, the fluorescent lights pierced my eyes like daggers of ice that hung from mansions in the winters of my childhood. I didn't trust my sense of balance enough to slide off the gurney and turn off the lights. I had no wish to lie face down with only this crinkling disposable sheet between the front of my body and a cold mattress, which rebuked me like a dry cough when I moved. So I remained on my back. Roses exploded as my eyelids closed against the glare. Had I been shaving this morning when I snapped? I, I wore a beard, so no, I had not been shaving, but I knew it had started in the mirror. I was washing my face when a stanza of poetry came to me. It started with a sensation of heat on my face and tightness in my chest. The way I often felt as a child on those mornings when I couldn't face the taunting day at a white grammar school set back from the, the, dapp the dappled waters of a long lake spotted with willow trees. My flesh hummed as though my shirt were made of insects and the skin on my back shifted as it did when my mother closed the door behind me each morning. The memory of that frightened little boy who had answered to my name groaned in my ears like an echo of oarlocks on a calm, deserted sea. I pulled the oars for the shore where every grief of my childhood waited. I'm a middle-aged graduate student. I told the image that the mirror had ruined I have got it together, but the jag of pain in my chest wouldn't listen. It wanted to remember and hear that poem that a moment ago had flown in and out of my mind. I knew that I had to get out before I died all alone of a heart attack in my bathroom. Walking seemed to make me want to faint. The um, apartment was so small just a bathroom, then a bedroom, a kitchen, and a living room. In each room, I found something for my hand to hold. The closest door, the closet door, the stove, the back of a kitchen chair, the rows of living room bookshelves that ended at the front door. The front door closed behind me. So we're going to stop there. Afro-pessimism. I love it. It starts out with a breakdown which is what black people are usually born into. Until next time, try to stay safe, try to stay sane.